Hello and welcome again. So in this video, the third one in the series, we will discuss how to choose the bandwidth in a kernel density estimator. And as you will see, there is no easy right answer. So what we'll really do is I will show you one heuristic rule of thumb, how we can choose the bandwidth. And then I'll give you a very quick overview of which methods R has. And I'll show you it does not make so much difference. So any of these will actually be good in practice. Good. So let's discuss rules of thumb. I have written down the formulas for the optimal bandwidth as far as the mean squared error is concerned from section three, we will, where we learned about the mean squared error for fixed x. That depends on x here. And from section 4.1, where we learned about the integrated mean squared error and then the optimal bandwidth for that is this, and that depends only on the roughness of f double prime. But in both cases, f makes a contribution and we don't know f, though we don't know that. And we don't know that, and it's kind of a circular problem, namely we are going to estimate f. So once we are done, we maybe would have a chance to find these values, but we need to choose them before we start estimating h. So we need to do something. And there is now no exact thing one can do. That just depends on f. We don't know f, so there is no way to get the correct number to plug in. So instead, a variety of rules of thumbs is used. And I want to explain one in a bit of detail here and in more detail in the note. Namely, one idea is we just, since we don't know f, assume that maybe f looks like a normal distribution. So use the optimal bandwidth for a different f, and since we don't know which one to use, we use the normal distribution. So that would be 1 over square root 2 pi sigma squared e to the minus x minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared. And that will not be right, but if our function looks a bit like f, it will be hopefully close to right. That is one thing one could try. And for that, if we go for the integrated error, we need to work out what is the roughness of f. And I show you in the notes the actual value how we do that, but here let me just run you through the steps we need to do. So the idea is we don't know the real f, instead of we take the normal density and do it for that, and then we kind of hope for the best. So if we do that, then it's rather straightforward, namely we take derivatives and that gives something else. The actual formulas are in the notes. And then R f double prime is integral f double prime of x squared dx. And that we just plug in from the previous step and we get an integral. And this integral is actually possible to solve analytically. Namely, if you think about that, when we do that f at some factor, then exponential, and the only x is in the exponent here. If you take derivatives, then you get the inner derivative on the outside, but what you're left with here is some, well, it's the same exponential because the exponential is its own derivative. And up here we get something, some polynomial of x. Good. And now here we do the same thing. We take derivatives again. Now there are two terms. There is something with x here and there is still the exponential. But in both cases, when we take derivatives, we still get x minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared in the exponent here. And then down here, if we take this square here, then we get an integral which somewhere inside the integral has, well, we have to square everything. One of the things we square is that e to the minus x minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared. So that's e to the minus x minus mu squared over, well, I square it, so the 2 goes away, sigma squared. The stuff in front is also squared. And if I do that, I can write that as 2 times sigma squared over 2 here. And that is up to constant the density of a normal distribution with variance sigma squared over 2. And this integral here we can then interpret as the expectation of such a normal distribution. And it turns out if you go through these steps in front of here there are only polynomials of x. 
So what you need to be able to do in the end is you need to just work out what's expectation of x to the k when x is normal distributed with mean mu and variance sigma squared over 2. And well, the first one we know. x to the 1 is the expectation is mu. x squared is the non-centered second moment is mu squared plus sigma squared over 2, I think. And then if you do that, actually, you find you will need the fourth moment, but you can look up the fourth moment of a normal distribution on Wikipedia. So it turns out it's all easy and you don't need to be this good at solving integrals if you remember that trick that the moments of a normal distribution are all known. Good, so that's how you can do that. And then there are still two parameters here. There is mu and sigma squared. And it turns out the answer down here, the one I haven't written, does not depend on mu. That is kind of trivial, the roughness can't see location because if we integrate over the whole space then whether we shift f a bit left or right that will not change the integral over the whole space of f double prime squared. It depends only on sigma and then the second part of the idea is use the sample variance so s x squared instead of sigma squared. Good. So that is one of the heuristics for bandwidth selection. There is no theorem which says that is always a good choice, but that is one choice people use and we don't have a perfect choice and maybe a good enough choice. And then in the notes, I'm not going to go through this here, I show you a few other heuristics which are built into R. There's one called NRD0 and another called NRD and another one called SJ. And I do a numerical example, the snowfall data from Buffalo, and you will see they all give quite similar estimates for the bandwidth. So I would again say either of them is a reasonable choice. So that's how we choose the bandwidth. And with this, we have everything in place to actually do kernel density estimation. So we know that well, there are various kernels and theoretically the Epanashnikov kernel is optimal, but the other choices are nearly as good, so it does not really matter so much. And we have learned how to choose the bandwidth using various heuristic rules. Good, so that concludes the main contents of this part of the module. And in the next video, I will just present a very short add-on, namely one could do the same methods in higher dimensions. And I will just give you a very short introduction of how one would do that. So see you soon in the next video.